here's the idea to make sure my van has enough power to run both my toaster and my microwave at the same time my lower back is a little sore today so being on the road means i'm gonna need electrical setup powerful enough to justify my electrical usage so let's get to work So here's the challenge, to not depend on shore power like so and hang out at campsites as less as possible. That means you have to produce as much power as possible on your own. And hence, the solar panels and 3000 watt inverter. And if the inverter can handle the microwave and the toaster, and then it will definitely handle my AC. Hmm. Where am I missing? Okay, I got the main battery right here. I got house battery right here. And there's gonna be one more inside my closet. Third battery, I got it. Here's what we have. We have a bunch of mess here, but then the new battery and the inverter are gonna live here together. Thanks to my friend Alex, say hi. hi. <laughs> and the remote, so I don't have to go into my closet every time to turn or on or off the inverter, lives here. Look how cool of a job Alex did. Like, it belongs here. So here's the in-house setup. We have the third battery, the 3000 watt inverter. So basically Alex, my friend, is helping me with all of this craziness here. So we had to buy this thick of a wire so inverter and battery can deliver the power good enough to be able to handle the ac right there right so this is a 2 awg size wire 33 square millimeter and then yeah this looks pretty good here in the closet then the charge controller will will go right here or maybe here we'll see and like i said the remote control for the inverter sits above the monitor for the whole rv here which is pretty cool and then the solar panels being ready to go up the roof since there's not going to be enough room to work on top of the roof alex here connecting them both 
together in a very cool and organized way. So we're gonna have to take both of them at the same time and put them on the roof together at the same time. Okay, panels are up. We're gonna get the wire through the fan, trying to connect it to the battery and the inverter inside the house. Looking good. I'm so grateful for this guy here. Okay, now we're trying to decide and figure it out how to get the wires inside. Where do we have to drill a hole? And by the way, the reason we're shirtless because it's literally 90 degrees outside and it's pretty tough uh, to be wearing a shirt in the middle of the day when it's 90 degrees. Okay, this is probably gonna be the biggest hurdle here. The hole. Find a hole to get it through all the way down here. Here is the hole. I think this is a good enough one. And here comes the second one. Oh, here they are. Two holes for two solar panel wires. It's coming in strong, straight from the roof. And here's the second one coming in. Yep. Make sure we put some silicone in so our roof doesn't leak later on when it rains. For reassurance, we put more silicon on the actual bolt as well, on the screw. Beautiful. Just all looking good. And there's that wire right there that goes inside the RV from both solar panels. How cool is that? Okay, solar panels are up. Now they are connected already through the controller to the battery. So the battery actually being charged as I speak via solar panels. So Alex did a really good job putting it all together here. So this thing is a controller. That's a Bluetooth device so I can literally look what's going on with the whole system using my phone. It's pretty cool. Alex did a really good job. Now we all, all we have to do here, at this point is just secure the battery and the inverter. So when I'm driving, it's not swiggling around and getting destroyed here. Pretty cool. So the end goal is to make sure this 35 year old AC unit is being handled off grid by using the solar system and the batteries, which I have three deep cycle batteries in this car, in this van. All right, here we go. The moment of truth. Everything is installed and running and supposedly it should handle the AC right there. We shall see right now. Let's turn the inverter on and go for the AC. We'll turn the fan on first. Let's fan. And let's go for... Super! And cooler. 
All right. Mmm. The cold air is coming out. I love it. The controller showing less than 12 here volt of charging. Well, obviously because it's on and then the inverter is going on, working fine. So it's handling the super mode pretty nicely, which it's gonna be a very rare occasion where I'm gonna use this super mode. I don't need that much AC here probably, unless I'm in Las Vegas or something. So it's handling the AC on super mode just fine. This is, if you remember, almost 35 year old AC. So it needs a lot of power. At this point, I'm pretty sure if I had to bring the microwave and the toaster, I would be just fine. And I'm obviously not doing that. I don't use microwave to heat up my food at all. And a toaster, I mean, there's no need for that. Uh, I'll be living on the road. I can be just fine without that luxury. But I am excited. I'm gonna test this out for probably 30 minutes or so. Now I can say reliably that I'm not gonna be able to run out of energy. Well, unless I'm using this for probably eight hours straight, which I'm not planning to. Hope you got some value in this video on solar system setup. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out to me in the comment section below or also on Facebook or Instagram. I'd be happy to answer any questions when it comes to solar system in my truck here. And if you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to subscribe, like this video, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye. I'm very excited. <laughs>